We're driving down the viaduct into the town of Sparrows Point. There on the horizon is a sight no one has seen in 40 years. The blast furnaces of Sparrows Point. Blast Furnace Row, they called it. If you grew up in Sparrows Point, you were accustomed to the fact that your town was bounded on the south by a row of giant blast furnaces, and on the west by the smokestacks of the open hearths. To the north were the two roads out of Sparrows Point, roads to comparatively strange places, places where industrial sounds didn't fill the air day and night, towns that were not built in the middle of steel mills, towns where everyone did not work at the same place, places where everything was not covered in red dust. The year is 1973. The town of Sparrows Point and Blast Furnace Row are to be demolished to make room for a gigantic new blast furnace, the biggest in the world. Some of the houses have already been torn down. Many families have already moved out. Mel and Glenda Lawrenson are driving through town with a movie camera to document the town so that people in the future, that's us, can see it as it was. Sparrows Point was a town of mature trees. Once the trees were planted in the early and mid 20th century, they were rarely disturbed for future development. That's Patsy Ward's gas station on the left, one of two service stations in town. The other one, Don Mason's, was at 9th and 8th Streets. Everyone had their favorite place for gas and service. My dad went to Bill Scores station on the other side of the viaduct. Here's another view of the blast furnaces as Sparrows Point Boulevard curved to the right and becomes D Street. D Street was the commercial center of Sparrows Point. Past some houses and doctor's offices in the 900 block and we arrive at Nick's Restaurant, also known as the G&G Restaurant. The stores in the 800 block of D Street included Nick's, the Provident Bank, Bateman's Grocery Store, and Kaplan's Department Store. The commercial center also housed a shoe repair shop, a barber shop, a beauty salon, a sweet shop, a dentist, a nondescript dry cleaner, and the town's post office. Coming up on the left at 8th Street, the GNG Drugstore where the townspeople filled their prescriptions. On the right is the former elementary school. Built in 1903, this substantial building turned out formidable sixth grade graduates until around 1968, when it was turned into a training facility for the steel mill. You will notice there are streetcar tracks on D Street. The streetcar was discontinued in the late 1950s, but the tracks remain. In fact, the very tracks you see here can still be seen in the crumbling pavement today. This house at the corner of 6th and D is where my doctor's office was in the early 1960s. The doctor was a chain smoker and always had a massive ashtray on his desk, always full of more or less extinguished butts. If you grew up in Sparrows Point, this is the first really sad scene in the Lawrenson's movie. The 500 and 600 blocks of E Street have already been torn down. Matter of fact, the 500 block is already a parking lot. The houses that used to be here were of the three-story wooden row house design. The brick duplexes ahead are the 500 and 600 block of F Street. You'll notice we are still on the streetcar line. The streetcar was replaced in the late 1950s by a bus line. Here we glimpse the green bus, which went to Baltimore by way of Turner Station and Dundalk. The green bus terminated in Sparrows Point. There was also a blue bus line to Edgemere, Fort Howard, and Dundalk. There is a brick duplex missing here, like a missing front tooth. On May 3rd, 1968, a steam generating plant blew up. The plant was a couple of hundred feet behind this row of houses. 
the missing house, was determined to be irreparable. It was torn down and not rebuilt. All of the residential streets of Sparrows Point were lined with mature trees. The loss of any one of these trees would be considered a tragedy. We are at 7th and F Street, turning onto 7th Street, following the green bus, which is on its way to Turner Station. We are turning on to the 700 block of I Street. The houses in the 700 and 800 blocks of I and J Streets were three-story wood duplexes. The houses in the 900 and 1000 blocks were brick duplexes. That large building ahead housed several businesses, the Tiger Press, a barbershop, and other businesses through the years. That's Don Mason's service station on the right. It appears to have been closed and boarded up at this time. That large building on the left is the police station and firehouse. Sparrows Point had its own police force and its own fire department, dating back to the 19th century. We're turning now onto the 900 block of H Street. These houses were covered with stucco. The 1,000 and 1,100 blocks of H Street were two-story brick row houses. We're about to pass under some overhead pipes. These pipes snaked through the town, carrying steam, oxygen, and nitrogen between various places in the steel plant. The car on the left is my family's blue 1971 AMC Hornet, parked in front of our house at 1110 H Street. The sign says Sparrows Point Elementary School, but this building is what we called the Annex. The building had several names. It was built as Sparrows Point High School in 1921, a beautifully ornate building reflecting the high spirits of those days. The school was expanded in 1934 to include a gymnasium, a shop, and a cafeteria. During the Cold War, the Annex had an air raid siren, Federal Signal Corporation model Thunderbolt 1000T mounted on the back of the gymnasium. Every Monday at 1 p.m., the air raid siren was tested for about a minute. The elementary school also had duck and cover drills in those days, but not at the same time as the siren tests. The 900 block of F Street had the same kind of houses as the 900 block of H Street. The blocks of houses in Sparrows Point were built over a period of several decades, which explains the variation in style and construction. This is the corner of 9th and F Streets. There's Glenda. Thanks for the movie, Mel and Glenda. Looking to the left toward the commercial center, the barber shop, and the sweet shop. Looking to the right toward the police station and firehouse. There was a large field across from the firehouse with four baseball diamonds. Sparrows Point had a league of little league teams. Now driving in the 800 block of F Street, the style of houses has changed again, passing 8th Street on the right, which terminated to the right at the baseball field. This is 7th Street, where we followed the bus to the right a while ago. My family lived at 617 F Street, here on the left, before we moved to H Street. Passing the house which was damaged by the explosion on the right. No matter where you went in Sparrows Point, you could always see the open hearth, the stacks of the open hearth, or the blast furnaces. You definitely knew you were in a company town, a steel-making town. 
Ahead is St. Luke's Catholic Church at 6th and D Streets. There were seven churches in Sparrows Point when the Lawrences made this home movie. Ebenezer Methodist at 10th and I, Union Baptist at 9th and J, St. Luke's at 6th and D, the Presbyterian Church on 5th Street between C and D, St. John's Lutheran at 7th and D, First Methodist in the 700 block of C, and St. Matthew's Episcopal in the 800 block of D Street. Crossing D Street here, a lot of parking lots that were houses a few months ago, turning on C Street. The houses on C Street were single-family houses. I used to go to Cub Scout meetings on C Street. There's the First Methodist Church on the left. Most of the houses in Sparrows Point had porches where you could sit out and listen to the rich soundscape of steel making. These street lights were one of the last improvements made to the town before it was demolished. The old street lights were bare incandescent bulbs. These new mercury vapor lights gave a bluish glow and a modern touch to the town. There is the elementary school again, what people of my generation would call the annex. Back on D Street with the number four open hearth in the distance, we're passing the Episcopal Church on the left. Turning now from D Street onto 8th Street and the post office on the right. The zip code of Sparrows Point was 21219. Looking west at the 700 block of E Street, you can see that the 600 block is not there, torn down. And this is the 800 block of E Street, a pretty style of brick row house. The backyard on the left once had a magnificent weeping willow tree. Now we are at 8th and F Streets. 8th Street only continues another half a block. It terminates at the baseball fields. You can see more of those overhead pipes ahead. The 900 block of F Street, as well as H Street, had stucco exteriors. I remember when the residents in this block were annoyed by the starlings massing in the sycamore trees. One resident played a record of starling distress calls outside in the evening, hoping to scare the starlings away. There is the elementary school, or annex again, the school was constructed on raised ground with slopes all around it. This was a great place for sledding when it snowed. Now we're out on Sparrows Point Boulevard. The main office building is on the left. We are going to the bungalows. The bungalows were a neighborhood of one-story homes which were separated from the rest of Sparrows Point by Sparrows Point Boulevard. The bungalow's neighborhood has a long and rich history and culture all its own, which has been documented in depth by Sparrows Point's historian Elmer Hall in his book, Diary of a Mill Town. We've turned on to Penwood Road, heading into the bungalows. This is where, every Thanksgiving Eve, a parade would be assembled after dark. The parade was a pep rally for the Thanksgiving Day Steel Bowl game at Penwood Park, where the Sparrows Point and Dundalk High School football teams would vie for the championship. The parade, including the Sparrows Point team, fire trucks, and the Sparrows Point High School marching band, would wind its way through the bungalows, through the main part of town, and end at the baseball fields, where after a robust rally, they would burn a great letter S high above the revelers. 
I believe that is one of the fire alarm boxes on the pole there. Sparrow's Point was sprinkled with fire alarm boxes like this. If you pulled the alarm, a whistle would sound a sequence of blasts. The firemen counted the blasts to obtain a three-digit number identifying the exact alarm box that had been triggered. We are turning on Forest Road, one of the three streets in the bungalows. You have to wonder, as we see people in this video, whether they are someone we knew. They very likely may be. There were three streets in the bungalows, Forest Road, Beechwood Road, and Hathaway Road. Forest and Beechwood were each four blocks long, and Hathaway was one block long. All the children walked to school in Sparrows Point, even the ones who lived in the bungalows. It's a long way from here to the elementary school on D Street. It is believed that the last family to move out of Sparrows Point was the Warhurst family, who lived here on Forest Road. We are back on Sparrows Point Boulevard heading out of town. The 68-inch hot strip mill is ahead and the other finishing mills are to the left. That is the end of Mel and Glenda's 1973 movie of Sparrows Point. Everything you have just seen is history.